Welcome to Tom's Creek Church as we worship virtually this evening. It seems so strange to do that. This has been a Christmas time and an Advent unlike any we've probably ever experienced in our lives. And yet, something about it reminds us that we need the Lord that we need worship, that we need time together as God's family. Even if we're not all together in one place, the Spirit's connecting us, and we feel like we're part of something bigger than ourselves. And we are reminded that there's more than that's in the news, than, than what we're experiencing all around us, that there is something higher that holds us all together that brings us all together. And that's why Christmas Eve is such a special worship experience. Even in this format, I believe we'll feel God's holy presence with us this evening as we are gathered. So let, our, let us prepare our hearts to worship Christ the Lord and let us begin in prayer. Holy One, we come here tonight needing you more than most Christmases that we, that we have in a long time. Meet us here. Meet us here this evening, Lord. Strengthen us. Bring us peace. Bring us inner joy. Let us feel your love this very evening as we sing, as we pray, as we feast together. Meet us here this night. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. is hidden from sight, even when love feels so remote, even when God is silent, even then, we believe. We believe in the presence of Emmanuel, God with us. This is the night we celebrate that the Holy came in human form to be light in our lives, to speak to us, to touch us to comfort us, to call us. And we have glowed with its brilliance from the inside out. from the inside out. Amen. At home, if you've got your candles gathered around you, you may light the Christ candle. If you've only got one candle, light that candle now as we have that light shine in our midst.
It is important on a night like tonight that as we gather together to worship that we confess that we fall short, that we need the Christ child, that the Christ child came here because we have faults, because we fall short. So let us confess. Merciful God, we confess that often we find darkness more comfortable than light. We confess that we find your good news frightening and unsettling, especially when we consider its demands as well as its promises. We confess that Christmas has become more to us than the birthday of Christ, partly because we do not want a Christ child in our lives or in our world. Forgive us, break us, bend us, remake us. Give us the courage to lay ourselves open to the wonder and the healing of your coming. Be born again into our world. Be born again into our hearts and our lives. Hear now our silent and personal confessions as we prepare ourselves for your nativity.
The true light that enlightens all has come into the world. That light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness has never been able to put it out. This is the good news. God has heard our confession. God has forgiven our sin. Thanks be to God. And now let us join together in a way in a manger. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy this song and maybe a little hard to sing with, but I think you're going to enjoy uh, the special guests that are a part of it. And now a reading from Luke 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in their field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord 
shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all men. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now let us join and hark the herald angels sing. And now, a reading from Luke 2, continuing. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, 
and see the thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they may know to broad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they had heard, it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For all of Advent, we have called on the power of music that inspires those who hear it to a brighter tomorrow. It has been a difficult time in this pandemic for singing to be restricted. In its absence, we have been reminded just how important it is to sing together. Indeed, music has often been the soundtrack of hope. We enjoyed a season of music appreciation, as well as reflection on the power of music. We watched clips from documentaries that told courageous stories of people singing as witness to light in the midst of poverty, in the midst of death camps, in the midst of protest, in the midst of disasters, and in the oppressive bonds of enslavement. We have filled the night of loss and discouragement and discouragement with music and with light. We have been presented with carols of resistance that have been sung as commentaries on injustice. Tonight, we bring you another. It is a song you will have no doubt have heard on other Christmas Eve nights. But this time, listen with a new appreciation. Written in France by Placide Capau, with melody by Adolf Adams, the song was banned from church services when Kapow's theology was deemed heretical. Some called him an atheist. And Adam's music was labeled as Jewish, the ultimate insult in Christian circles at a time when Gregorian chant was having resurgence. Further, the song's message of humility and shared humanity went against the late 19th century idea that slaves did not have souls. Even though the church in France tried to kill the song, the American abolitionist and minister John Sullivan White made it popular in the Civil War era with its third verse proclaiming a radical message. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break. For the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Uh, someday we will once again be able to join our full voices in song in our sanctuary. And when we do, we will sing as we never have before. But for now, we will allow this song to be our prayer of hope on this evening of hope and light. new and glorious 
glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night's divine was born on oh, night's divine oh night oh night's divine truly he taught Well, I have started to believe in the last week or that, uh, that this is the Christmas Christmas we have ever Christmased. And I say that because what we do is we, we idolize and we make look perfect and beautiful the scene from that night. And yet, it was far from beautiful for those who were in the midst of it. Mary and Joseph struggling to find a place. Her on a donkey while pregnant over, over the roads. It was tough. It was an arduous journey. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't want to be doing that, but they were required to by the government to go. Nobody would decide to make this journey without reservations, without having a place. Nobody would go on this journey while pregnant. Oh. It was horrible experience for them to be on the road. We make it seem so nice, but when you really think about it, it was a trial. It was a tribulation. 
It's a lot like 2020. You see all the things online with, of course, another thing doesn't go right, you know, 2020. Well, that's been our year. And on a year like that, we should be able to more fully enter into why the Christ child needed to come. You see, humanity has always been in chaos. You know, we're in the midst of what we're experiencing, but in the 1917, 1918, they had a pandemic that was worse than this. We always think things are always getting worse, but look back in time, and people have had hard times. And the Christ child came to enter into that, to bring hope, to bring light. Now, one of the nice things that we had going on is they talked about the Christmas star, the great conjunction that happened last night, and everybody was so excited about seeing it and and that it was going to, you know, look like the nativity star because they think that's probably what happened is the two came together to create this light in the sky, and we have so idolized what that star looks like that when we went outside, some of us just saw clouds. (sighs) Some of us looked up and we're like, oh, that's what it is? You see it up there. It's, it's two beautiful lights next to each other, but unless it's absolutely perfect at the exact same moment and set up just right, it doesn't look like the nativity star. So once again, we were all so disappointed as we were looking up at the sky, many not seeing anything at all, others saying, but that doesn't look like the North Star that I've always thought of. And you know, the interesting thing is now we, we have that. I have it here on my stole. It's something that we talk about, that North Star, that beautiful light. But Mary and Joseph knew nothing about that. They weren't following any stars. Most of the people around weren't even looking at it. They were just living their lives in the midst of the chaos, the problems, the leader. You know, they weren't the only ones on the road. All these families, all these people had to be traveling to go pay a tax nonetheless. It's not even a trip for a good reason. And they they didn't notice the star. Most of them didn't even notice it was shining there. How many stars are shining that we fail to notice? In the midst of this Christmas Christmas we've ever Christmased, how many of us have forgotten that no matter what, we have good news? No matter what, there's a light that is shining into this world, and those of us who know about the Christ child, that light goes with us even in the darkest of times, in the darkest of places. Even in the Christmas Christmas, since Mary and Joseph had to go through all the pain and agony and hardship to bear a child out in the cold. That's the type of year it's been. But it's also a reminder, a reminder of why the Christ child came. And if we we can't come to this Christmas Eve and realize we need the Christ child more than ever, well, I don't know if we'll ever be able to do it. This is a time where those that are on the fringes of faith can be given something that is that light in the darkness in the midst of a year that everybody picks on and puts hashtags 2020 to say how terrible of a year is this. It is, this is the year where we can share about this Christ child and how if they had that, there'd be light even in the midst of this darkness. So yes, the Christmas Christmas we've ever Christmased as we're... (laughs) I'm talking to an empty sanctuary except for Mr. Jeremiah back there. I mean, that's just what has had to happen in the midst of what's happening in the world. But in the midst of the Christmas Christmas we've ever Christmased, we've sang. We've come together and worshiped in different ways. We're here this night. We've had different ways that this very night we have worshiped and come together. The light is shining. The light is shining. 
it's shining upon us. Let it shine into your very heart this night. Tonight we're going to have a love feast. Now, normally we would call it communion, but communion's meant to be done in community. And so I call it a love feast communion. Now, if you didn't uh, get anything beforehand, get yourself some form of bread product and some form of something to drink. Whatever it is, you decide. And for that, you can have whatever you want. It does not have to be bread and juice. And we're just going to share together, wherever we are, we're going to have this love feast communion on this Christmas Christmas we've ever Christmased, and to let that light enter our souls, to break through the darkness for those that are the most under the weather, the most sad, the most blue, the most anxious, the most depressed right now, this very moment. Let the light, the story of the Christ child break through for you this very night. Focus on this as we have this love feast together. Uh, Up on the screen, there'll be a couple of spots where it says all. Wherever you are, just join in and and say the lines that say all. And uh, we'll move through this together. Uh, I'm delaying just a moment for people that are going to go get their potato chips or popcorn and their root beer or whatever else that they're gathering together so that we can be all together uh, as we have this love feast communion on this Christmas, Christmas we've ever Christmased. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our covenant God, sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born, so that by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And your word became flesh, born of woman on that night long ago. So on the night in which he gave himself up for us, He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us as we gather wherever we are. And the gifts of food and drink that we have before us, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. As we partake of them, let us feel your holy presence with us. Let the food we take nourish us mind, body, soul. Let the beverage we drink remind us that through Christ we are made holy and righteous and are called your children and that you love us and will never forsake us. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now we can enjoy our love feast. And now we can commune with God as we listen to the song, Hallelujah, as we partake. And so go and take and receive each one of those elements. And the great thing is that since we're not here and you have that which is comfortable to you, you don't have to worry about when to get out of your pew or anybody looking at you. This night, as we have communion, wherever we are, we can just take in that nourishment. We can just focus on God being with us God's love and light shining on us in the midst of the darkness of this Christmas. And so I ask for you to just let forget about everything else. Just let the music wash over you. Let the elements feed and nourish you and open yourself to feel the divine in your presence this evening. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our Lord in Christ. For the Lord God, all powerful, and he shall
us pray. Holy One, you entered in to the darkness of this world, reminding us that your light is always present to us, always available to us. Lord, in this year where it's felt like the light has not been there, let this meal remind us that your light is ever present to us. Lord, for those that most needed this meal tonight, to be reminded that you love them, that you love all of us, that you sent your child because you love us. Let their souls be renewed, restored this very evening. Those that had almost given up, Lord, I would pray that this simple food and beverage spent with you will bring hope, will bring healing, will bring light into this Christmas Eve of Christmases. Amen. We come to the classic moment of every Christmas Eve, the moment to light our candles and sing Silent Night. And we've wondered this year how we could possibly we could recreate a sense of normalcy in this moment. We wondered how we could get through it with the joy we usually feel on this night, having lost so much this year. No, it's not the same where the lights go dim and one candle I light and it goes out throughout the sanctuary with the lights turned off and it's reflecting and we see it everywhere and we're just filled with that glow and we see as the light goes out and reaches everyone as we pass the candlelight along. No, it's not the same. And we know that because of the people we have lost, the jobs and security we have lost, that it likely will never be the same. Surely, every year, we will remember this moment when we thought perhaps light and song would elude us. But here we are. We will light our lights and we will have our song. Just like soldiers in World War I sing across enemy lines, everything stopped for a short while as the message that all is calm and all is bright prevailed above the violence and dark night of the world. We have been sorely divided on many things. We are devastated by our losses. We are tired and we're not so calm. But for this moment, this night, let us remember that we are not alone and that we believe that the music and light of God's promises come again and again. Hope for a better tomorrow. Love that works for a more equitable world. Joy that wells from a place deep within us. And peace that offers us the assurance we need. Let us now join together in silent night. And wherever you are, if you want to take your candle and lift it up, in homes if you're together and there's someone else there, you guys can light each other's candles, sway. Just enter into this moment and be reminded that light continues to shine into the world. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin. Shepherds quake 
I invite you to raise your candle high for the benediction. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that Christ is born among us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of hope, love, joy, and peace. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that light alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs>